Good afternoon. Uh, this is Dr. Terry James Gingrass, and the show's called Dr. Gingrass's ADHD Chat, and we're here to make the world safe for ADHDers. And um, I am a clinical psychologist. And I'm in private practice, and I've been doing this for almost 40 years. And in that time, I have seen at least 10,000 ADHDers. And uh, I see, you know, I treat individual, well, kids, adults, families, uh, and I do some consulting, coaching with. Uh, uh, ADHDers who are entrepreneurs. So, um, I spend a lot of time with ADHD, and I'm also the uh, parent of a, what, he's now an ADHD adult, uh, and uh, I, I tell you, tell folks almost every week that when I was the father of a young child, there wasn't an awful lot of information about ADHD out there in the world. Um, and I went through a, an American Psychological Association approved postdoc, I mean doctoral program without once ever hearing about ADHD. There was no coursework, there was no, no lectures, no nothing about ADHD. So when we started realizing that we had an issue uh, with our young man, I didn't know where to go. And I, I went to some acquaintances I knew who were worked with kids and uh, primarily and had fancy postdocs, you know, from like, really schools with a great reputation. They didn't know what to do. So, one of the good things about uh, going to uh, an APA-approved doctoral program is you can figure out how to learn stuff <laughs> by your own. So I, you know, I went to a lot of seminars. I uh, went to a lot of uh, training programs. A lot of uh, I read a lot of books and journal articles and that sort of stuff all designed to help me understand ADHD. And uh, now we're, we have a, a fair amount of information out there. It's, it's pretty well known, but there are still an awful lot of people who haven't really progressed past about 1950 in terms of their understanding of ADHD. And then unfortunately, a few of them are doctors and probably worse for <laughs> for their children some of them are parents okay but you know you, being a parent of a kid and you don't know exactly what he's doing or why she's doing that and how to fix it or anything like that is scary and people when they get scared they don't do creative new things they tend to do the same thing over again only harder hoping it'll work and that especially has to uh, is true for discipline, that sort of thing. There are a large number of people out there in the world who are in the school of spare the rod and spoil the child. Um, and people, probably still the most popular treatment for ADHDers is behavior modification. And unfortunately, that tends to be pretty much how to punish your child. How, you know, the whole B mod is kind of like reward the behavior you like and punish the behavior you don't like. Well, most of the time, the therapist is spending time figuring out how to stop the behavior that they don't like, that the parents don't like. So it's punishment. And I, matter of fact, I have a friend of mine who's a psychologist, and he said he had, had one kid come up to him, you know, and say, 
hey, Doc, I figured out what your job is. Huh? Oh, yeah? What? Your job is to teach my mother better ways of punishing me. Oh. Uh, think about that. <laughs> just, just think about that. I have another acquaintance, I'll call her, who is a world-renowned animal trainer. She trains dogs for agility trials. And like, like I said, she has an international reputation. And she says, punishment leads to unexpected aberrant behavior in people and animals. And, you know, truth is, you, that that's frequently what happens, is if you're going to punish all the time, um, your ADHD kid starts to figure out that he or she can't win. No matter what they do, they get punished. Uh, they do too much, they get punished. They do too little, they get punished. They do something impulsive, they get punished. They forget to do something, they get punished. Um, then you got a kid that gives up and I think I've, t I've mentioned before that a lot of times I see people who are in their 30s and they're coming to be evaluated because they think they got ADHD or they know they have it but they never had any treatment for it but they're getting sick of relationships that blow up, um, jobs that they get fired from, feeling like a failure all the time, all that stuff. And um, most of them also have been treated or are, have been told that they have a depression and or anxiety. Well, son of a gun, guess what happens if you take somebody, a kiddo, and you punish all the time? And it's not just you doing it, or the parent doing it, also the teachers. Oh, you're, you're on yellow light now, or oh, you're on red light, or you know, whatever, oops, you know, I'm sorry, whatever treatment they are using, or way they're using to maintain control in the classroom, and pretty soon the kid starts thinking, number one, there's something wrong with me. Why am I in trouble all the time? I must be a bad person. Those are the kiddos who become depressed. And then the other side of the coin is, I'm going to get punished sometime. Don't know when. I just know I'm going to get punished. Something's going to go wrong, and I'm not even going to know why or what happened, and I'm going to get punished. And they become the anxiety people. And some people are equal opportunity and have a little bit of each. You punish all the time. You get negative and aberrant types of behavior. Uh, either the, you know, I mean, I'm not sure which is better. Sometimes the kids just sort of give up and become a, you know, depressed filled sort of vessel. And sometimes they fight back. And at first they fight back against the parents, then the teacher, and then pretty soon any kind of an authority figure. And then we got another problem, okay? Now we got a, a kiddo who's well on his or her way to antisocial personality disorder. Um, ADHDers, okay? The best way of handling an ADHDer is not to go spring loaded into the punishment first. There, you know, and I'm not, I'm not one of the, I'm not big on getting trophies for participation and all that other stuff that's sort of trendy nowadays. 
But with an ADHD ear, first of all, punishment doesn't really work very well. And second of all, you're just kind of piling it on because they are having a rough time. You know, whether it looks like they are or not, they're having a rough time trying to fit in at school, trying to get through all this boring homework that they're not sure why the heck they have to do it anyway. They're just not in a happy place. And there's nothing that punishing, you know, for, for one thing, a lot of times they're getting punished for things they don't have good control over, okay? I mean, it is a neurologic condition, right? It is, their brain is wired a little bit different than, than the average person's brain. And therefore, they, um, they have a hard time paying attention. Their working memory is terrible, so they forget stuff all the time, especially stuff that they're told, especially if they're told that along with three or four other things. Ain't no way they're going to get all four of those things done. They may get one of them done, but I guarantee you they're going to forget the majority of them. And it is not unknown that the parent who has been busily thinking that the young man or young lady is upstairs in their room doing the three or four things they were told to do gets really irritated when they go up to their room and find out they did one thing, maybe, and they're playing video games. That is a weakness in working memory, okay? They literally don't remember what you told them, especially if you tell them a whole bunch of stuff all at the same time. Retention is, is likely to be minimal, and therefore, um, they got, you got another reason to punish them. If you know what's going on, maybe you won't do that. If you don't, if you know what's going on, maybe you'll give them something external, something they can read or hold on to or check off uh, so that their working memory problems don't get in the way of actually getting stuff done. And of course, they also have troubles paying attention. Hey, uh, and honestly, you know, they have troubles paying attention to some things more than other things, okay? If it's something that they're really interested in, they, they can do a pretty good job of paying attention to it. But if it's something that they're not particularly interested in, they'll have troubles paying attention to it, okay? And Punishment, it doesn't go, isn't going to make it better, okay? And, of course, then the other thing is emotional regulation. They have a tendency to go off. Boom! And the more you jump on them, the more likely they are to go off. And so your best shot, first of all, is to... Be a really good observer. Be really aware of what's going on with your child. To understand that when they first get home from school, they may have had a rotten day. You know, it's kind of important to try to find that out. Um, because that, if they have, it's not a real good time to say, tell them that they didn't make their bed that morning. Um, or whatever other thing you could find to complain about. You need to say, whoa, okay, we had a rough day. Things aren't going well now. We'll wait a while. We'll calm down. We'll get them calmed down. Then, then we'll talk about it. And we won't necessarily have to punish, okay? Because um, like I said, punishment is not, not uh, without consequences. Let's put it that way. You know, if you punish all the time, and understand, I am not telling you anything, describing any mistake that I haven't made myself as a parent, okay? I, before I knew what I was doing, <laughs> I probably made all the mistakes, okay? 
not you know not because I wanted to be mean or cruel or anything but I just didn't know any better now I know better um, but um, you, you've got to uh, you've got to be able to take time yourself and say whoa wait a minute What's going on? Why is this? Is there something I know about ADHD that makes me know that he's going to, lets me know that he's going to have troubles doing this particular thing? And what's the best way to handle it? You know, when you want a strategic involvement, you want to. you want to do something that works out strategically so that in the long run, he or she ends up being a 20-year-old with good self-esteem who's got resilience. That is, they don't quit just because they have a failure. They look at a mistake as a mistake and something to learn from, but they don't say, oh, God, there's another one. I'm going to screw up again. I got uh, you know, I'll never... I'll never get out of the 10th grade or whatever. You want to do everything you can to help them keep their self-esteem intact. That doesn't mean they don't know the meaning of the word no. It just means that that's not the only word they hear. And uh, that you have an appreciation for for their positives, for their strengths, for the things they do really well. And um, that will, you will end up <laughs> with a much better outcome go, going at things that way than being in, into punishment all the time. And I've probably mentioned this, the Lasota rule, re well, very regularly. It is a well-known, you know, people always talk about, well, okay, you're supposed to praise your child, but how much you're supposed to do kind of thing. Well, the Lesota, uh, they actually studied what improved people's performance. Uh, started out just in workplaces, and then it spread, and they started doing the research in the home and all that sort of thing. But basically, four positive responses for every single criticism. Four to one. Okay, now I invite you to get yourself a little three by five card and just sort of make a little tick mark every time you do a positive or a negative and see how you come out at the end of the day uh, or at the end of the week, whatever. But start paying attention to that. That's, that's important information and it's easy to get and it's free and it works really well. It also puts you in the mindset where you're looking for your child's positives. Okay? Because these kiddos, I, I think I said last week or the week before, that nothing you do is going to make your kid neurotypical, which is both exciting and scary. Okay? It's scary because, good Lord, they could really screw up their whole lives and kind of good because oh man what a unique way of of living a life they really took what they were given and and did some awesome things with it and that's what you're shooting for that's what you want to see what can they make of this of their skills what can they make of their talents okay and that's on you to notice them to pick them up you know what does this kiddo do well Does he trade baseball cards with the other kids and always seems to come out a winner? Uh, is he a great athlete? Is he a leader of, of kids? Um, is he musical, artistic? You know, something. There's, there's something good with his hands. Um, there is something. And it's important for you to figure that out. And also know what his values, interests are.
Okay, I am just about said all I had on my mind this week. Uh, this is one of those areas that I get a little excited about. Um, because, well, you know, there's, there's a lot of, like I said, the spare the rod, spoil the child kind of thinking. Uh, and I'm in a, I live in a town that's military. You know, we've got, you, you want a branch of the Department of Defense? We got it all. And, um, you know, there's a way they have historically trained recruits. Uh, and a lot of the folks, that's the best parenting they've had. So uh, we, get, we get a lot of folks who, who think parenting is like having a basic trainee. Not so. Okay, so um, like I said, I'm Dr. Terry James Gingrass. This is Dr. G's ADHD chat. And I am going to be um, saying goodbye today, but I want to let you know in a few weeks, we're going to have some big announcements coming. Uh, and um, I'm going to send you to my website, hopefully, so you sign up for, for my mailing list. Um, not yet, but that's, that's coming soon. And anyway, uh, I'm at uh, terryjingrassphd.com. And if you have comments down below here somewhere uh, is the place to do them. And we will catch you next time. Remember, we're trying to make the world safe for ADHD because ADHDers are the kind of folks, the outside the box thinkers that solve the big problems in the world. And that may be your kid. Okay, catch you next time.